Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to create an Ubuntu installation thumb or flash drive from your Mac uh, computer. So basically, imagine that you need to build an Ubuntu server for some reason, and you want it to actually be on a physical box. And so if you want it to be on a physical box, one of the problems you're going to run into is basically how do you create installation media anymore so that you can actually install it onto a physical box? Well, what you can do is you can use a tool called Belina Etcher and using Belina Etcher you can turn the ISO that you download from Ubuntu into a fully uh, formatted installation thumb or flash drive and so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So the warning, warning for today is when you use Belina Etcher in order to turn your thumb drive insta into installation media for Ubuntu, it's going to deal with uh, the partition tables uh, and the file system on your thumb drive in such a way that it's more or less going to be unusable for anything other than being able to install Ubuntu until you actually go through and reformat it again. So some people have the idea of they're going to create a thumb drive with the installation media on it, and then they're also going to put some files files and folders and some other additional, let's say, troubleshooting tools on the exact same thumb drive. And then they can have, hey, they can have one thumb drive and all the files and everything that they need. Uh, basically, when you use Belina Etcher in order to turn this into an installation thumb drive, it's going to go through, it's going to create the partition tables, it's going to deal with the file system in such a way that this is more or less only going to be able to be used uh, to install uh, Ubuntu when it's done. So an important thing to consider is they say that you need uh, right around a two gig um, thumb drive in order to make this work. So this is a four gig thumb drive. Uh, what I would recommend is don't go out and spend a lot of money on a 64 gig thumb drive or 124 gig thumb drive or even a 16 gig thumb drive, right? Because all of the additional space is essentially going to go to waste because you're not really going to be able to use it for anything else. Uh, so what I would say is go out uh, for this particular thing, go out and like grab a four gig uh, thumb drive. I always believe, you know, be a little bit more, be a little bit more than what they're asking for. So if they say th that you need a two gig thumb drive in order to make this work, I would say go out, get a four gig thumb drive. Again, in the modern world, it's pretty inexpensive. It doesn't really matter. It's a couple of dollars more maybe, um, but don't don't go too big. Again, don't, don't, don't worry about a 10 gig or a 16 gig thumb drive because at the end of the day, uh, basically all of that extra storage is going to be for waste. So that, that's the only warnings here. So in order to create your installation thumb drive, uh, you're only going to need a couple of things. Uh, first, you're going to need a thumb drive, and that thumb drive is going to need to have at least two gigs of space on it. So again, I am using a four gig uh, little thumb drive here, and that's honestly what I would recommend, but two gigs should be good enough. Past that, you're going to need your Ubuntu ISO. So whatever version of Ubuntu you want, whether you want the desktop version or the uh, the, uh, the server version, whatever, simply down the, download that from Ubuntu. And then past that, you need the software called Blue Lena Etcher. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to plug this into your Mac. You're going to run Belina Etcher. You're going to give it the ISO file. You're going to show it what the target is. You're going to hit go. You're going to wait a couple of minutes for the right process to happen, and then you will have your own installation media. So with that, I'm going to plug this into my MacBook Pro, uh, and I will walk you through the process. So here we are at my MacBook Pro. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug in my little thumb drive here. Uh, when I plug in the thumb drive, it's going to give me a little warning in a second. You know, the disk you inserted was not readable by this computer. Uh, I'm just frankly going to say ignore. Uh, I actually have already flashed this in the past. And again, that's some of the types of errors that you might may get once you flash your thumb drive. So it is important to think, you know, whatever thumb drive you're going to use for this project, have it as a dedicated installation thumb drive and probably don't try to use it for anything else. Anyways, past that, uh, you can go to Belina.io forward slash etcher and that will bring you to this particular project and then from here you can download uh, for mac os uh, they do actually also have this for windows and for linux you can go down and you can see all of the additional features that they have uh, past this um, Basically, once you download it, once you install it, that's a pretty easy process. I'm sure you can figure it out. Uh, what you can then do is we can go to Finder, 
And then we can go down and find Belina. So basically we're looking for Belina Etcher and we can double click on Belina Etcher. So this will open up and this is literally all we're looking at here. So in the middle, uh, this is our flash drive. So this is a verbatim Go Media. Uh, we can see that it's a 4.01 gig in size. I could change this. Again, be careful, be careful. If you have a couple of thumb drives plugged into your system, make, make sure you, you flash the right one. I would recommend you unplug the other, other thumb drives. Again, when we talk about thumb drives, it may not be a thumb drive, it may be like an external hard drive. I would probably unplug any external th hum, uh, hard drives, any other, um, you know, non-internal storage uh, before I do this process, just to verify, that's what I would do. But anyways, you wanna make sure uh, that, that you are connected uh, to that particular, again, the thumb drive that you want to flash. Then from here, all you're going to do is you're gonna select what image uh, file you wanna to flash to that drive. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna to go to downloads, and we can see I've downloaded a couple of ISOs. And so I have the Ubuntu 18.04.4 desktop AMD64 ISO. So I'm simply going to select that for my downloads. Uh, and then I'm going to click flash. So once I click flash, it's then going to ask me for my password. I then plug my password in, I hit OK, and now it's going to go through and it's going to start the process. So we can see here, it's a 2% flash. I don't know if you can see at the bottom, I can't really zoom in for you, but you know, it's going along, it's telling you how long, it's uh, how fast it's flashing the drive, and it's giving you an ETA. So this one is starting at somewhere around five minutes. Uh, so take the to in order to, uh, to flash the, the, the drive, uh, it will take you a little bit of time. So this is probably a good time to go off and get a cup of coffee. So once it finishes actually uh, doing the flashing process, we then go through another validation process. I don't know if you can see it from where you're at, but this will take about another minute here. And then finally, once the validation process is done, you'll most likely get an error like this. You don't want to initialize. Uh, all you're going to do is click on the eject. So this will unmount this from your Mac. And now you should have a uh, thumb drive that you can then install Ubuntu from. So now you have a flash or a thumb drive that you can actually install Ubuntu from onto whatever PC you want to install Ubuntu. Now the thing is, we're gonna be dealing with a desktop system. So let's say you have a desktop system like this. One of the things, just if you are a newbie out there, I would tell you is do not plug, do not plug your USB drive into one of the front USB ports on a PC. Here's a little secret. The front USB ports are generally the slowest USB ports on your PC, especially, oh, if you have an older PC, like you'll notice there's a little dust on this one. So let's say you have a little bit older PC, you think it's a little bit older, it's been sitting in a closet, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna use that one to install Ubuntu on. Well, if you're dealing with old PCs, realize the front USB here, might be really old. It might be a 1.0 a one, uh, USB slot or maybe like a 1.1 or a 1.2 USB slot. And when you go to do something even as simple as installing uh, an operating system, it may take a long time. That's why the real pros, whenever you're doing, dealing with data migration or if you're gonna be installing an operating system or anything like that, always plug into the back and then take a look and see if the back USB ports are labeled as to what they are. Sometimes what you'll notice is you'll have a couple of like uh, USB 3.0 ports and then a few more USB 2.0 uh, ports. So if you have some free USB 3.0 ports open, that is what you should be plugging your USB stick into. And so this is one of those little tricks of the trade. Again, one of the things that makes me very frustrated about the PC world is so many times, you think you're dealing with something and what you're dealing with isn't what you think it is, right? So you plug in, again, to do a migration or do an, uh, an installation, you're plugging into a USB port, you you assume it's gonna be the fastest USB port or the fastest USB uh, on the system, and what you find out is no, you plugged into a very uh, slow USB port, and so the entire process is going to take you a lot longer. So again, when you plug in your, your USB thumb drive, make sure to plug in into the back and then if it says, you know, 3.0 versus 2.0, plug into the 3.0, go for that fastest interface. So with this, let's go over, I'll just uh, just run through the final steps of how to, to make sure you understand what the boot process looks like, uh, and then you'll be able to install Ubuntu. Okay, so now I have plugged the thumb drive into the sister PC of the one that I just showed you. We're going to turn this on. And now the important thing is that we're going to need to make sure that we boot off of the thumb drive 
and not off of the internal drive. So we see that F12 up there. We're going to now hit F12, and that's going to drop us into the boot order. So this is an important thing. If you're, if you're new to PCs, sometimes they don't show you automatically You know what you need to do to change the boot order, press F12 or whatever. So that's where you'll hear me sometimes just start smacking on keys. Literally, that's what you do. You turn on the PC, you just, you just run your hand over the keyboard until something pops up, and a lot of times that's where you will you will get a little notification that'll tell you, you know, press F12 or do XYZ in order to change the boot order. Uh, so from here, uh, we're going to go in. We can see this legacy boot up at the top. And what we can see here is, so I have an Intel solid state drive actually in the system. So that is what it's going to boot off of by default. Then we have the USB. So we have that thumb drive that we just created, then CD, then NIC. So what we're going to do here is we're going to highlight the USB, that thumb drive that we just uh, inserted, and then we're going to hit enter. So now this is then going through the process of we're actually going to be booting off of the thumb drive. And then from there, we're going to be able to use the Ubuntu basically live thumb drive. So we can basically run the operating system directly off the thumb drive, or we can install uh, Ubuntu onto the internal hard drive uh, from the thumb drive since we've now booted off of it. It's going to go through this little process. And again, you're going to notice this is a little slow. It's a little slow. And the reason that this whole process is a little slow is, again, you're, you're working off of a thumb drive. So do just kind of keep that in mind. And there we go. So now, uh, obviously, we're through this process. We can simply try Ubuntu. So if we click on Try Ubuntu, that will go into a live operating system that allows us to run the operating system essentially off of the flash drive. Or we can go through and we can actually install Ubuntu and you know go through that whole process. Uh, you should be able to understand that process. Or if you don't, I have another class on how to install the actual operating system. But this this at least gets you to to this point uh, so that you can go and actually install Ubuntu on to bare metal hardware. So there you go. Now you know how to create an installation thumb or flash drive for Ubuntu. And I walked you through the process to get to the point where you'll actually be able to install it onto your bare metal hardware. Uh, this is one of those little uh, tips and tricks uh, that over time has actually become more valuable as many of us have frankly forgotten how to do this over the years. Uh, again, I've been doing uh, standard IT or whatever for 20 years. Uh, and back in the day, we always had you know optical disks laying around and reinstalling operating systems was something that you did you know who knows how many times every day uh, one of the interesting things though in this modern world is so many times uh, we're dealing with virtual machines so you'll be dealing with something such as virtual box or parallels or VMware fusion or hyper V or something like that and so you actually install an operating system into a virtual machine simply with the ISO file so basically you download the ISO file and you use the ISO file just directly to install into a virtual machine or you have a computer again such as a Mac or a Windows computer that simply comes with the operating system already installed and if you have to reinstall the operating system there's some kind of a reset process that will simply take you back to the factory default and you end up not having to deal with physical media anymore and so this can actually become a problem when you're like oh no but but now I actually need to install a, a, um, the operating system onto a couple of physical machines but but I don't have disks anymore, and I've got an ISO file, but, but I can't just boot off of an ISO file, and it runs you into a bit of a problem. So, uh, so being able to turn that ISO file into a bootable thumb drive is a valuable thing in, in certain circumstances. But again, this is one of those, this is one of those tasks. It's really interesting to think about how over the years and over the decades is a task that went from being completely normal, creating installation media, which is something you did on a daily or weekly basis to now, I, I, I can't remember. I just I can't even think about how often I do it. It's just a pretty rare thing. So kind of a curious thing how the how the technology world changes. Um, I will warn you with this though. Uh, again, when you're going to create that installation thumb drive, I would argue take a thumb drive that you don't plan to use for anything else. You can recover the installation thumb drive. So you can actually go in there. You can erase the thumb drive. You can repartition it. You can reformat it the whole nine yards. It is a bit of a pain process. So what I would argue is just grab a thumb drive uh, that you don't expect to use for anything else use that as your installation thumb drive and go from there basically that should just be your installation thumb drive not used for anything else is what i would recommend so anyways as always i enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one 
If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.